So let's just take a moment to really explore Lemuria because I don't think we've actually ever done that before. So could you tell us what civilization looked like on Lemuria? At least when, at least during the ancient times. Are you asking for like what the housing looked like, what this, the the interaction with one another looked like, like what, how they, what they did for jobs, like what specifics and we can help you out there. Yeah, absolutely. So if I was a being from Lemuria, what would life look like for me? Just daily life. So whatever you were doing would be really in connection with nature for a lot of the part um, that like we're showing schools for the children, but the schools are based out of um, elder teaching um, of really it's, it wasn't so much like teachers were like, it was like the elder, the wisdom of the elders was taught to the children and the ways of the elders. And then they got older and they learned how to, utilize their gifts like they realized everyone didn't have the same gift and so they then kind of branched off to what was your gift and they helped you mold and use that gift um in nature like in rhythm and there were communities it was very community based we're showing a lot of the things that they did like almost like there were communal kitchens, like there were villages, but the kitchens were in the middle and people worked together to create the meals and to create, like they ate together. They did a lot of things in a very communal way. Um, that was very beautiful. And then there were some major cities, but not cities like you would think here as a metropolitan area, it would just be where um, you would go to not, it would kind of be like what was represented in court in uh, like um, in the castles, kind of like you go there to experience a little bit of different socialization to get different tools. And then you would take that information back to your communities. I heard that there were also beings that lived under the water. Could you show Carrie those beings today? Yes, there are glass domes, what you would think of glass domes within and cities within, underneath the water where uh, the beings could interact with the uh, the people, I will say people for of Lemuria. And so it's like the people of Lemuria would go into these glass dome cities underneath the water to be able to see through and engage with the underwater beings. Did Lemuria and Atlantis exist at the same time? Parts of them, yes. So it looks like Atlantis was an original time, and then Lemuria started to, like they overlapped in a way. And because of the what happened in Atlantis, that's what created the destruction within Lemuria. But it wasn't really destruction. It was Atlantis still exists. So they both, like you see the destruction, you see the negativity, but Atlantis still exists as well. So the separation, it was what you're going about going through. It was the separation. Well, that makes so much sense. If you look at it as an imprint, that you see that you still see the destruction but it's an imprint that was left because Lemuria was here before Atlantis they coexisted but it's just different at how they existed they coexisted but they did evolve at the same time so a lot of people have really deep wounds from Lemuria how can they become aware if they're holding on to these things? Well, whenever you feel something in energy of whether it be pain or anger or any of those emotions, you cannot automatically say to be shown through the light, what is in the darkness and allow it to come to the surface. And you can ask specific questions 
if this is Lemuria, this is a great way to create a baseline within your body of yes or no's. If you don't have a fluid connection with your higher self or your guides in channeling, that you can in some way create a baseline of a yes or no in how you connect with them. And then once you've created that yes or no, then you can ask when you're feeling things, is this from, you know, Lemuria? Is this from my connection with Lannis? And, and then, you know, you'll get your yes or no response. And then you can ask, you know, if it's no, then you can ask different questions and work with your intuition to be guided to what questions to ask. And that's very basic in the fundamental of the beginning to use yes or no uh, response systems. You can even use a pendulum if that helps you in a visual way, creating your baseline within the pendulum, then asking the questions. But if you set the intention to have what is meant to be shown for you, connect with if it's from Lemuria. But you can also, is a big aha moment for Carrie because she was really connecting with the, and she was there at the last days of Lemuria and the destruction. That's what she remembers in her past life. But she does not also when she sees that that yes is the echo of what was left behind is destruction. But in reality, that destruction was the, the disconnection between the three and the five D if you will. And Lemuria actually went on to advance into a higher realm. And so it was actually the graduation. It looked like destruction to you. It looked like destruction to you in your past life and your memory of it. But in reality, it was, the the destruction was all that couldn't go on to the higher realms was left behind but the higher stuff and the beauty and the excitement and the love and the communal way of living and being and that all went on and graduated and so now you can look at what you thought was a trauma in your past of lemuria and realize no the trauma is just you know like when a crab sheds its skin when a snake sheds its skin it's just the skin that's left behind but the snake goes on thriving